What's cracking everybody? Welcome back to the channel, new video. Today we're gonna to talk about Pelican Bay. The notorious Pelican Bay, right? California's most notorious prison. It used to be San Quentin Old Folsom. Those are the two most notorious prisons. And it's funny how I'll see videos, I'll see, I mean, not videos, I'll see movies, Hollywood movies that don't know anything about the system, don't know anything about the state, and they'll, they'll still say, like, we'll send you to San Quentin, or you'll find your ass in Folsom, right? And those are low-level prisons. Um, they, they lost their uh, maximum security inmates in the 90s. I believe it was 93 when they shipped all the level fours out. Um, but... I wanted to give you guys a little more insight. Those that don't know, a little bit more insight on Pelican Bay. Okay. So it's true. Pelican Bay has been the most notorious prison in California since it was created in 1989, right? The end of 1989. Now, the reason why it became the most notorious. There's various reasons, but the number one reason is all of the legends from every faction, from every one of the factions was moved from wherever they were housed before, Cork and Shoe, uh, whatever, wherever they were housed. And they were all brought to Pelican Bay. Shoe, though. See, Pelican Bay is basically a tale of two worlds. You have... A and B facility, which are the 180, level 4, 180 main lines. And then you have C and D facility, which are the shoes, security housing units. Back then, the only place the legends were was on C and D facility, the shoes. And then you had the push by the CDC, the California Department of Corrections, the media, and certain politicians to pump it into the brains of Californians and basically the rest of the world that Pelican Bay is the last stop. Pelican Bay is the worst of the worst. Now, when they meant that, they were basically talking about the shoe. But they were allowing you to think it was the whole prison. Now, one thing about the CDC, because I heard people, uh, I, I heard people, I read in the comments where someone had asked or a couple people were asking, how is it that a guy on his first term um, with no shoe term can wind up on a level 4 180? Is that possible? Yes, it is. Um, I did. I, wanna, I landed on New Folsom B facility. First termer, first yard ever hit. When I was... The various times I was in Pelican Bay on a B facility, there were guys just starting their prison terms that landed there. Now, here's a trip. I'll tell you guys. When I was in the uh, reception center, when I was in Wasco, an older homie asked me, because he goes, you're going to level 4, 180. You know that, right? I was like, yeah. And he goes, did you kill him with a gun or a knife? I said, with a gun, he goes, you're going to New Folsom. He said, if you would have stabbed him to death, you would have went to Pelican Bay. They like sending people with stabbing cases to Pelican Bay, so you're right next to the shoe. And that always stuck in my head. That was a trip. And a lot, and that's not always the case. It wasn't 99% of the time. It wasn't 100% of the time. Probably wasn't even 80% of the time. But I noticed a lot of the homies when I was there, um, they had stabbing murders. There was other ones that didn't, you know, because then it becomes also based on uh, housing, bed avail availability, and stuff like that. But I do want to say this. Pelican Bay, <clears throat> the shoe is what it is, right? Um, but I also want to speak upon um, A and B facility, how it's different. Now, yeah, it's, it's a 180 shoe kickout yard. And I always tell people, when people ask me, what's the craziest prison? I don't know that one is crazier than the other. But if I had to say it, I would have said High Desert. Um, and that's because High Desert was one of the newer ones. 
I mean, yeah, it didn't come on much longer after Salinas Valley, but there was a lot of stuff going on in high desert that was creating a lot of headaches. Um, I don't want to get into that stuff, but there was a lot of cannibalism going on there. A lot of, a lot of stabbings, a lot of things that really were unnecessary and were just from lack of communication. And I'm talking in-house. Um, so I would say that place because Pelican Bay was established, New Folsom was established. You know, you had joints that were established that, that were running smooth. But one thing that's a trip is Pelican Bay, <clears throat> because of its location, was one of the driest prisons as far as dope. Yeah, dope gets in there. Get dope gets in. I mean, I'm not going to get into one of the main ways dope gets in. But um, for the most part, that's one of the driest prisons you would ever see. Anybody who's been to prison knows uh, the majority of times, as far as the, 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 the Raza from Southern California, the majority of the time when people get in trouble, it's over a dope debt. That's usually the stabbings you're going to see for the most part. It's over a dope debt. So Pelican Bay didn't really have that problem. But dudes would come out of that shoe. And um, one thing about Pelican Bay main lines. I've told you guys before. Every inch of the yard is being recorded. I don't know if it's five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes before they release yard. They go over what I remember was five minutes because we could see when they would walk over and they would start going. Because you, when you're in your cells, depending on what section you're in, you can see where the, the monitors are. The camera, there's two cameras on every building. There's eight buildings. And then the, the central tower has a camera. Um, but you'll see when they walk over and they, I guess, push the record button and then they go back and then they would say five minutes to yard. Right. So in my mind, it's always five minutes, but who knows other blocks might do it sooner. But because they start recording and nobody gets away with anything they do on the yard. Um, the stabbings were different for a minute in Pelican Bay. They would try to run up in the cell and, and whack you in the cell and, and handle you that way. Um, that was that was also a way to try to keep it to where only the building. got. I mean, there's a lot of reasons for it. But for the most part, stickings were always on the yard. And like I said, because no one was going to get away, it didn't matter what faction it was. When you got moved on, they were taking you to the dirt. There was no, uh, you know, let me hit them five or six times and get away with it. So that way I'm still here. I can do, you know, I'm still uh, helping out the pad, you know, and this, that, that was in Pelican Bay. Nah, it was. He's got a tune-up coming. It, it didn't matter if he, if a guy had bad paperwork, bad charges, or just needed to get checked. No matter what, he's going to get hit the same way because the gunner doesn't know, and you're going to still catch that uh, that same amount of time. And I've mentioned it in other videos where that right there, Pelican Bay, that was one of the things that, because of that, it affected how dudes got stuck and all the other 180s. Because they would go back to the shoe and maybe the next time they didn't get kicked out to Pelican Bay, they went to New Folsom or Sinan Valley or, you know, anywhere else. And they had that mentality with them. Ain't no getting away. What do you mean? We're going to let's hit them a couple of times and get away. Let's hit them seven or eight times. Let's, no, it was we're taking them in the dirt. If he lives, he lives. Um, I can tell you Pelican Bay shoe was the most respectful place I ever did time. Um, it is also a place where you're under constant um, attack, um, meaning the authorities are trying their best to break you mentally when they stick you in there. Um, they had a concerted effort for a long time to try to take all your senses from you because they know that is one of the easiest ways to drive a man insane. Um, there was even talk at one point they were going to take the TVs from the shoe. The TVs were one of the things that actually made people sane or kept them sane. Unfortunately, some people got lost in them. Um, you know, you could see people start losing their mind in there, deteriorating. Uh, I remember a guy 
after the the cops came to pick up the trays, a piece of like a wrapper, I don't remember if it was a salt, but I, I just remember it was a piece of trash fell off the tray and landed on the tier, right? And it's a little ways out. And um, one of the guys on the tier, it was driving him crazy that it was there and he kept fishing and fishing and fishing. And a lot of times when you start seeing guys develop OCD in there, that's the beginning of the end for them mentally. You would see dudes in Pelican Bay that um, were very strong men, had put in a lot of work. And next thing you know, they're smearing feces all over their body. Um, they start becoming a problem because they think that someone is talking about them in the pod. They become a threat. And that's when you know, people would start trying to spear them, hit them with darts, with arrows, whatever it is. Pelican Bay was, you know, I've always said that the California Youth Authority is one of the worst experiments that California ever did on kids. And I'll second that with Pelican Bay was the worst experiment on human beings, on men that the CDC allowed. There was a prison, may, it may still exist, and I, I, it's, it's, a, it's a prison that was created by the British. I don't remember where it's at, <clears throat> so I don't want to say that. But it was created specifically to break the Irish Republican Army. And the way they were doing it, they started breaking people. And the CDC flew out there, officials from the CDC flew out there, and they were very interested in that because they wanted to break the big four here in California. So they created, they built Pelican Bay based off of that prison. So they built it with the intentions of, of driving people insane, getting people to commit suicide. Obviously, they'll never admit that, but it's the truth. Do some people belong in the shoe? I mean, they have rules. It's just like society. There's rules and, you know, whether people choose to live by the rules is their choice as individuals. But you can't torture people. We're supposedly that, that superpower that's against that, the Geneva Convention and all this stuff that we want to say that other countries violate human rights and yet we turn the other, not we. They turn the blind eye when they build a place, spend, was it like 200 million to build that place it's with a specific intention to break people's minds? And a lot of those guys get returned back to the community and the CDC knew that. But anyways, I don't want to get, you know, in, into the weeds with it. But I just wanted to give you guys a, a little glimpse of what the shoe was like and what A and B Yard were like. A and B Yard were very serious places. I will say that any, any level 4180 is very serious. But I know the, the difference between Pelican Bay's uh, A and B facility, their main lines, and others is you were a... Uh, 10-minute walk away from the legends. I mean, they were down the street. The cops knew it. Everybody knew it. Um, it was a place where you did not want your name mentioned unless it was for handling your business. You didn't want no spotlight on you. Uh, you wanted to conduct yourself at all times in the most professional manner. Because um, if you didn't, that was a shark tank. They were coming. So... That's today's video. Um, I, I am going to be recording something else today. Uh, I don't know if it'll come out today, but this is today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, everybody be safe, be smart, and tell the ones you love that you love them, right? I'm out.